Hey guys, I am Caleb Giddings. And I am, of course, Keith Finch. And welcome to our first episode of Gun Day Brunch in the year of our Lord 2022, which I want to be, be very clear. This is no one's year. You're not going out and making this year our year or anything like that. No. Chill Everybody just out. be cool. Be chill. Relax. <laughs> Don't say it too loud. If you are near wood, knock on it immediately. That goes for all of you. I'll know if one yeah. of you didn't do it. Yeah. Everybody just be cool. 2022 is in the room. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Keith, also, is there anybody that we would we need to thank before we start this video? Oh, yes, we do. Here's a banner of all of them. Ta -da! Yay! All right, guys. So let's uh, let's get this one going. Um, you know, obviously, it's like a couple of days after the new year. You guys are all chilling, and this is sort of the time of the year where, let's be real, most people don't make their New Year's resolutions before New Year's. They like make them up on New Year's Day or a couple of days afterwards, and then throughout that first week of the year, they're like, "Oh, this is what I've resolved to do," and then of course they don't they don't do it. Um, but you, have you most of the time you don't like have you ever stuck to one have i ever stuck to one no not in, not in like a, i plan to do it on the first and then stuck to it it's always just i've resolved to do this thing and then i grind and do the thing it's never like a this is the year of this and i mm -hmm. manage i i've never I, i've never been able to like oh i'm definitely going to cook more this year from home because that's healthier and more economical. I've, I've never been able to manage one of those. No, neither have I. Um, I do like the ones, the the people who do point out that, hey, you don't have to wait till, you know, January 1st to make a New Year's resolution. Or if it's June and you're suddenly struck with the idea that, you know, you should, you know, do more push-ups or something, you don't have to wait until the next year. You keep, don't say like, oh, well, it's June. It's not a good time to start it. It's always a good time. So, no, you, but, can, you can just do that. You're allowed. Yeah, you, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Um, my favorite meme on the whole topic is how come everybody thinks that like going back in time and stepping on a butterfly will cause massive dramatic changes in the future, but nobody thinks that making a small change today will cause dramatic changes in their own future. So, you know, um, do right. something. Yeah, so with that in mind, uh, we're going to talk about shooting New Year's resolutions because we all like to shoot. And we Which all have why you're all here, except for the yeah. few people who email angrily that like, oh my god, bonus entries. Like, sorry guys, we have a website and we have to do things with it. Sorry. Yes, we're all here to make money in some way, shape, or form. So you know what, like and. Which actually sort of leads me into my first uh, New Year's resolution, which is to, and this is tangentially shooting related because most of the people I interact with online, it's around the concepts of shooting, is to be less sarcastic with people who aren't, in, who are clearly not engaging with me in good faith. Um, and that's something that, you know, I know you get that, we get that a lot in this line of work where you'll post a piece of content or something like that. And you will get someone who is very clearly from the outset, not there to actually ask a genuine question or engage in any sort of good faith. And for a long time, my sort of default setting for that has been to just like snark back at them. And I kind of don't want to do that anymore because it's exhausting. And I've been trying to ramp that down this past year for people who've been following me for a long time to probably notice a, a significant decrease in the amount of uh, disrespectful things I say to people <laughs> but yeah that's kind of my first one is like I just want to like dial that back to like almost nothing there will be times you know there, when the, there are there are certain instances where it you you need to let it out a little bit and yeah, someone sure. has definitely earned a bit of commentary of a colorful nature every now and then but to we we see it a lot in the industry and i understand it from both sides of it i've been i've been the content consumer looking in and then mm. you know giving commentary and now i have for years uh been the content creator giving out and seeing the commentary come back and some of it is very constructive i get i i never want to say the comment section is totally cancer because we no. do get 
constructive comments. We do get engagements in email and we do get very well thought out uh, uh, questions and commentary in that regard. But we also get a lot of, you know, you're wrong, we don't like you, ha ha. And, it, and I'm with you. It's just, it's a waste of time. It's sure. a waste. So I'm not feeling any better having said, ha ha, I am not dumb because I have, I absolutely am dumb. I'm just a guy talking on the internet. Look, Didn't we do a whole episode because, about how dumb we used to be and how we're going yes. slightly less dumb? And we I do mean less dumb slightly dumb. less dumb. We, we have earned the next level of not dumb. Yeah. <laughs> By being dumb. Yep. All right, we've, Keith, we've give me, dumbed our way through it. Give me your first one. All right, so you you are working on snark and interaction. I am going to be working on something directly shooting related, and I really want to work on handgun. I really want to work on handgun in 2022, and this is hard for me because I hate handgun. I genuinely hate working on handgun. I hate how I shoot handgun. I, I hate how compared to guys like you, uh, like Mark, like Tom Alabrando, um, uh, Steve Fisher, uh, the people who have worked a lot of handgun and who are really good at it, <laughs> and I who have not worked a lot of handgun and I'm not nearly as good at it, I, I don't like the fact that I am not good at it. So I need to become good at it and that takes work. And I understand that because I'm pretty good at rifle and I do a lot of work on rifle, but it also happens to be rifle is fun and I don't find handgun nearly as fun. So I'm going yeah. to force myself, hopefully this year, even with ammo prices being high still and with no, with no indication that's going to go in a extremely positive direction. Like we're not as bad as we have been, guys. I, I got ads this morning for nine millimeter under 40 cents a shot. Um, but I'm still going to take that and run with it and try and get to a better point on handgun for, for 2022 and a better understanding of handgun for 2022 and be able to run both a semi-automatic and a revolver very competently. I don't intend to be, you know, an A-class by the end of the year or anything. I'm probably not going to have the time to do competition more than jumping into one or two here, you mm -hmm. know, locally if the stars align, but I will be, I will be grinding my way to get into some handgun related classes and work on probably the weakest section of my shooting, which is handgun. Because what you, you made posts about this, you know, carbine is easier than handgun. It yeah, really, it really is. Carbine is easier than handgun. So if you are good at handgun, it's very easy to pick up carbine and translate it, where it's harder to go the other way because you're losing more control. So that, that's what I, it's, it's going to be a year of handgun for me. Hell yeah. My only other one, and this one's actually shooting related, is, you know, I look through uh, past resolutions and past like training um, uh, ideas that I've had for how I want to get better at this or better at that. And it's always like, I'm going to dry fire 30 minutes, you know, three times a week and stuff like that. And for some people, that's realistic. That's a good goal. That's never been a really realistic goal for me, mostly because it's hard for me to focus on anything for 30 minutes at a time. Uh, like this podcast, the fact that we can do 30 minute episodes, well, let's be real. We don't even really talk about the same thing for 30 minutes. So never mind. Um, <laughs> but it is, it was a good kind of, okay, nope, not an example. Yeah, I was, I was going and I'm like, eh, wait, a, no, never mind. Get out of here. With that. <laughs> but I the reason this wait. works for three minutes is because we can ramble randomly and it's, it's just us. <laughs> we can do that. It's allowed. It's just, so for this year, I really have thought about it and I thought about time commitments and time investments. And what I want to do is it may not seem like a lot of time, but when you talk about dry fire, and I, I obviously have advocated dry fire as being hugely important for years and years and years, and it is, and I loathe it because it's so, ah, it's so goddamn boring. It's just the most boring thing that you can do with a gun in your hand because you don't get any of the emotional satisfaction that you get from shooting an actual target or anything like that. However, it's very Marvin the Martian. Where's the kaboom? Yeah, where's, exactly. No earth shattering kaboom. I want it to make the noise. 
yeah, you do, you, I do want it to make the noise. It's a big part of it. I want the fun part. Right. So, but this year I, I looked at it and like, if you don't count, you know, the time it takes to set up for a dry fire session, which for me is get my gear out, put my gear on, get my timer set, do all of that. You know, that's probably a good, whatever, five minutes there. What I want to do is a, at least five days a week. So your Monday through Friday schedule, leaving out the weekends, uh, you know, with allowances made for travel days and stuff like that. I want to dry fire with intent for five minutes a day. That's it. Five minutes a day, dry fire with intent. And what I mean when I say dry fire with intent, I don't mean like idly pick up a gun and make clicking noises because you're bored on a Zoom call or something like that. That doesn't count, right? It's fun, but that's the only time dry fire is fun is when it's distracting you from doing something even more boring, like be on Zooms. Um, <laughs> but, but the idea fun story, is Caleb more. is dry firing just before filming this episode and we won't discuss the reasons why. <clears throat> But the idea of dry firing with intent is that, you know, I come into each session just like I would a workout session. Like, what's my goal? You know, am I trying to do 75 push-ups at the end of the year or am I trying to do this? And if you build that intent into a session and then you do it five days a week, but keep your time limits reasonable, I'm, I have a theory that I would see that I will see way more progress dry firing with intent for you know what works out to 25 minutes in a week than I would if I scramble and throw together one grueling 30 minute session per week. So my theory is more aggregate days on the gun, even if it's maybe less time, will get me better results, which I'm gonna find out. So that's it. I, Those are my I shooting with, resolutions. I I agree with that theory. I I like and uh, it, it makes sense in context, too, because we tend to disregard all the time it takes to set up to do something like go work out. Like, mm. especially trap if you don't work out at home, you don't do cardio as some basic um, in uh, maintaining at home. There's a lot that goes into going to the gym. You got to prep all your gear. Everything's got to be uh, ready. Then you have to commute to the gym, which could be, you know, 15 minutes or it could be a half hour or it could be there's the round trip there. There's everything you else you have to do in the day. And we really don't look at that as a, uh, as a whole huge block. And so doing that and then saying, well, I'm going to work out for an hour while I'm there, I'm going to work out for a half hour while I'm there. You suddenly turn that into a two hour block, a block of your day. And mm -hmm. That's a lot, especially when you have other things to do. That doesn't mean that going to the gym is less important than it would be at any other time. But saying, I'm going to go to the gym for an hour instead of just, I'm going to make it to the gym today, whether it's for 10 minutes, whether it's for 15 minutes, whether it's for an hour, whether it's for an hour and a half, I'm going to make the commitment today and I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I think that's coming at it in a different way mentally and that helps a lot of people because now you can mm -hmm. justify the the win is getting there and doing something productive versus making an absolute time commitment and now once you have the habit built maybe you know for a fact that like oh i can do these 15 minutes of structured drills in the case of dry fire or 15 minutes of a structured workout or a half hour of a structured workout in the form of a gym, uh, a gym trip and say, look, this, this is what I'm going to work today. This is why. And, you know, here we, here we go. So yeah, I like make, making a habit of putting uh, at least a little time investment into something like that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I actually got the idea from working out because last year I was TDY a lot and I was struggling with trying to find a workout schedule that worked out. And finally I was like, Hey, look, you have time in the day to do push-ups and pull-ups and squats. If you just do that, and if you just start with like 15 minutes, three days a week, you, that's better than, you know, trying to go to the gym once a week for two hours or whatever. And what ended up at the end of the year after doing that for almost six months, I was doing a gajillion push-ups, you know, I was doing like 75, that's not a gajillion. I was doing like sets, you know, and it had extended the time it would started at 15 minutes became 30 because I was doing more reps and more sets and all of these things. But because I had already sort of built that time into my day, 
tacking on an extra five, 10 minutes here or there was a lot easier than if I suddenly was trying to be like, I'm going to the gym for two hours. So that was kind of where I got the idea for dry fire and it worked for push-ups. So maybe it will work for revolver reloads. <laughs> one and hope. Fingers crossed. All right. So what's your uh, other one? If you have to, if you don't, that's cool. Yeah, I, I really episode. didn't have a second one, but there is, there is a trend that I'm, and this is probably the one that's going to be the easier one to uh, jump onto and dig into is I, I got into re really into PCCs again recently for some reason. So I guess not only is this going to be a handgun year, which is a deliberate focus, but uh, I went from having none to one to two uh, nine mil carbines again. And so um, we're, and they're, they're fun ones that I like playing with. <laughs> One's a Scorpion and the other's an MP5 again, um, which has been a boomerang gun. I had it, I sold it under under duress to a very tall man with a beard very <laughs> angry, very angry man by the name of steve he was like this is mine now and i'm like but, but no i Wait, like this he's no, like no I... this is mine now and he just pressed money into my hand he goes you know what to do I'm like, okay and you're like okay i'll do the and right then thing recently he's like well, now I've got like six of these, so I don't need this one anymore. Do you want it back? I'm like, yes. Yeah, I kind of want it back. Yeah. I would like and that so back, yeah. that, that one boomeranged back. And so I think this year, in, to go along with the whole uh, thing with ammunition, like this, this year might focus a little more heavily shooting with PCC because 9 mil is likely going to be one of the more affordable ammos to buy in bulk out there. Mm -hmm. um, not that anything is particularly great, like the heydays of 20 cent nine millimeter. Um, we want you back. Oh, we do. But, I was just talking uh, to somebody yesterday about how great it was when you could get nine mil for like a case of nine mil for 190 bucks and they yes. throw in free shipping. Yeah. And it was, it was brass, whatever your favorite right. it was American Eagle meter was. It was 19 cents a shot. And then like if, if you got it over two hundred dollars, so if you threw in like a P mag, they would give you free shipping. <laughs> They're like two hundred dollars uh, free shipping. This is one hundred and eighty nine. I'm like, ah. Uh. Yeah, well, you could like. Uh. My favorite thing was I would get that case, and then I would throw like a box of like HSTs in on top of it, and then yeah. I remember one year, you know, not to get off our topic, but I remember one year I went and I shot a club level steel challenge match with nothing but winchester pdx1 defender nine mil rounds like the 147 grain yeah. defensive nine mil rounds why because i had 500 of them and i was like eh, might as well shoot some of these bad boys up who gives a crap might, right might as well do this now you're looking back and you're like that was i want to choke <laughs> <laughs> back then back then you know even defensive ammo was like 35 cents around so yeah, it's not like it was could, you, the good the most like the the absolute best winchester or federal or anything you could pick up out there it was still like oh yeah 60 cents um mm. so your, your box of 50 was only like 30 bucks and you're like yeah that's funny Ah, uh, so oh god oh memories anyway um yeah. so i think yeah we'll, uh... i I, I think this will be a uh, PCC type of year. I know you've got a PCC you're debating on shooting. That got me thinking, and then I got got mine back, and so I've got two of them. So I don't know. I it'll, it'll probably change, but I'm kind of on a PCC kick right now because I've I'm got a lot of 5.56. Five, five, I've done 5.56. Five, five, it's yeah. really nice, but like I've done it for a long I time like, now. I <laughs> I like how your first resolution was get better at handgun shooting, and your second resolution was also like, but PCC. <laughs> like, yeah, but, like, but still carbines. <laughs> um, but still carbines. Yeah. Speaking of PCC, do did I impulse purchase another uh, Aero Precision nine mil bolt carrier group that's on its way here? Maybe. Am I waiting until eForms goes live to form one? Um, so I currently have, uh, I think it's a 5.5 five upper that's sitting in my closet along with the 16 inch carbine. Uh, am I waiting for the eForms to come back online so I can form one myself a little nine mil SBR? <gasps> Maybe. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. 
I mean, but how dope would it be to like, so this is, I promise guys we'll end this episode shortly. Like, so I shot a steel challenge match with the 16 inch carbine. And one of the things that I noticed was because it's, you know, long, there's a lot of like muzzle, muzzle over travel when I'm doing long transitions from target to target. And so of course I'm like, man, you know, what would work really great for this, an SBR. And I'm like, I have an SBR upper. This is not a, this is a great idea. No, it's a bad idea. It's a great idea. It's a bad idea. It's a great idea. No, it's so a great we'll idea. See. <laughs> yeah, it's I think it's a great idea. idea. So, well, it, you know. It's one of those, because I've shot the 16 inch, I've shot the Arrow 16 inch. I've shot the CZ in the 16 inch. And I have seen, I've never shot, but I've seen the MP5, the H&K Roller Lock 16 inches. And I, honest to God, hate them all. Like I, I don't like them in the long barrel variant at all. It's I get so why they long. exist. I I get why they exist. I get why people shoot with them, and I get why um, I I get why people who rifle shoot for competition use them uh, based on the length and how they run the guns. But that's not how I run the guns. I love me like the five to eight inch version of all those nine millimeters is just mm -hmm. the best place to play with. PCCs in general. And so, yeah, when e forms come back online, I am probably going to stamp both of mine as well. Form once, form once. Yay. Uh, all right, guys. So I, I just uh, love how this e form four business, they're like, hey, guys, we're going to turn it on. And it immediately went, and they're like, Ooh. Psych. <laughs> oops. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we accidentally easy, the whole thing. Hopefully by the time this episode comes out, E4, so uh, obviously we filmed these in advance, guys. So hopefully by the time this episode comes out, the first week of January, E4s are fully armed and operational. And uh, my sincere hope is that the second those things come online, everybody on the planet is like, have some Form 4s, ATF, you sons of bitches. And yeah. just... Uh, just absolutely. The, the backlog that they've been getting on those, because I... I knew these were coming um, mm -hmm. back when it was, hint. we all know that this was eventually a goal of the ATF when they e-formed the form ones and the yeah. form threes. They wanted to get fours on board as well, but fours, obviously guys, is the commercial end of things. It's the, it's the final purchaser. It's where you actually pay the tax. Um, if you form one, obviously you pay the tax too, but you're the manufacturer at that point. It's a little bit different and not as many people do it. Uh, so that's the, the form four they knew were, was going to be this mass exodus once it goes digital and they get it working, it's going to make everyone's life easier. Mm -hmm. The key point is to get it working and make sure that their book, which they are required to maintain, it's the law, the NFA, their own is, law. Yeah, their own law. They did it, but like 1934, not anybody who's still chilling there. <laughs> it's right. not like. Um, they they have to maintain the NFA registrar, so they they've got to make sure that this updates properly and everything's integrated because this is going to be the largest volume of changes that they're going to have to oversee. Yeah, but I'm like, oh man, if it works, like again, the the idea of digital form fours, digital fingerprint submissions, like every because the whole thing is so and. We're really one thing I would like to dispel, yeah, that's fine. One thing I would like to dispel is the myth that the ATF hates NFA transactions. They don't. They really don't. Believe me, if the guy who's in charge of the division at the ATF had the manpower and the funding to process these things in a week, they absolutely would oh, because they, they're tired they of your fucking phone calls. Yep. Um, but yeah, and they so would that's, absolutely that's, get them done. Oh yeah, and that's a big part of the transition to the e forms is they're much easier to approve because if you fill out the e form wrong, it can reject it at point of origin versus you having to t write all this stuff out and it gets mailed in and four months later they're like this is out of place re rejected versus you fill out the form and the form says hey that's not supposed to be here try again stupid and you can go back and redo it before you actually send it in send in your checks and all of this other stuff so fingers crossed this is going to be a great update um and it's going to make everything super awesome and easy and i'm sure that somebody will write in and uh, let an email about how much they hate the atf and how we shouldn't show for the government so you know you know what I, we've said fine. it often enough we hate the nfa we don't think it should be a thing 
but guys it is a thing but it's here so yeah. if if i if it is a thing like my my freaking state tab that i have to buy for my license plate every year i gotta buy that every year i only have to pay this once so tech, like per item it's more convenient than owning a car um it's something i have to live with so anything that makes it easier it is an improvement and it's something yeah. that i'm I'm all on board with. Now, something that makes it go away is also an improvement. So I will still yeah. be going for that. But as long as I have to live with it, I want to make it as easy on me and everyone else as possible. So yay, e-forms. Yay, e-forms. All right, guys, that's it. Now we're actually done with this episode. So happy new year to everybody. Uh, if you have some sort of New Year's shooting resolution, leave it in the comments for us. Make sure that you guys you know like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Uh, for 2020 or shit what year was last year thank you for 2021 whatever um, doesn't count thank you for thank it you for the all last blends year. together at this point 2020 is just like and then blur yeah so thank and you for the last here. 40 some odd weeks of podcasting guys uh we appreciate you all listening we appreciate everybody who's tuned in on all the streaming platforms as well as youtube so you know, going into next year, make sure you share this with your friends, make sure that you uh, like it, and uh, we will, we will see you guys next week. Later.